something else, man. Again, another song that just makes you go to different places. <laughs> One thing I was thinking about is um, his singing style and how he makes you think about things. You know, I uh, drew a contrast and a comparison to uh, between him and um, uh, Cat Stevens, only in um, the format of the way they approach um, making music. You know, he needs very little um, instrumentation to accompany him and so that he can convey a thought and a message. Someone else that I thought about um, was James Taylor. And the reason why I'm thinking about James Taylor is, of, of course, because, I mean, they have a good uh, comparison there as well. And I have a James Taylor um, a reaction uh, coming up very, very shortly. It might be actually uh, after this. I'm not quite sure, but sometime within the next couple of days. And so I was thinking about James Taylor as well. And uh, I even know the song. Uh, it's Fire and Rain from James Taylor. And uh, so I'm going to be doing that. But I started to think about the comparisons uh, between him and other artists that have that ability to convey so much emotion and thought, uh, but without putting out so much intensity in the way of uh, musicianship and all of that stuff. All the dude needs is his voice, his um uh, guitar and maybe just a little bit more and that's it that's powerful that's impact uh, personified and this dude really has a very very strong impact and lots and lots to say um, this is the kind of music that I can probably sit all afternoon and chill with and just listen and just drift it doesn't always, you know, I mean, I could listen to Pink Floyd all, all afternoon. I could listen to Yes all afternoon, but I could also listen to something like this. And it's the same effect, but in um, in a different format. You know, it just, it'll still take you on a little bit of a trip and make your mind move. Wow, good song. All, all of these songs, fantastic songs. Things Behind the Sun. Okay. Mm. Yeah, uh, and again, it's uh, album information rather than specific song detail. Uh, good amount of info here. Things Behind the Sun appears on Pink Moon. It's the third and final studio album by English musician Nick Drake, released in the UK by Island Records on the 25th of February in 72. It was the only one of Drake's studio albums to be released in North America during his lifetime. The only previous release there had been a 71 compilation simply entitled Nick Drake, fe featuring tracks from both his first two albums, which were not released in North America in their original forms until 76. Pink Moon differs from Drake's previous albums in that it was recorded without a backing band, featuring just Drake on vocals, acoustic guitar, and a brief piano riff overdub onto the title track. Released two years before Drake's death in November of 74, at the age of 26, the lyrical content of Pink Moon has, been often, has often been attributed to Drake's ongoing battle with depression. The songs are shorter than on his previous albums, with a title album running, running time of just over 28 minutes. Pink Moon, like Drake's previous two albums, did not sell well during his lifetime, but has since garnered significant critical acclaim. Hmm. Okay, let's go down to accolades. It was voted number 131 in the third edition of Colin Larkin's all-time top 1,000 albums in 2000. In 2003, the album was ranked number 320 on the Rolling Stones list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. In 2012, that ranking was revised uh, to 321. And in 2020, it was revised to 201. Wow, what a big jump from 321 to 201. That's between 2012 and 2020. It just goes to show, you know, how many people are discovering and, you know. In the UK, Pink Moon was placed at number 48 in the Melody Maker all-time top 100 albums in 2000 and at number 126 in Uncut's 200 greatest albums of all time in 2016. What an impact this guy has made. 
you know, um, here's a young guy, very, very self-isolating, making a couple of albums, um, staying homebound, suffering from depression, passing on very, very young, and uh, probably unbeknownst to him, the impact that his work would make, uh, or the impact his work uh, would affect down the road. It's amazing, man, you know? And uh, again, yo, I uh, gotta say uh, shout out and thanks again uh, to Sean. Thank you, Sean, for uh, introducing me to such a great artist, someone that I've never even heard of. Unbelievable. Yeah, three albums, but so much influence. Incredible. His family, I'm sure, is very, very proud uh, of his work. So, that concludes my look at this really, really great artist. And, oh, to think of what could have been, you know? That's what you think about when they pass so young. What could have been? And, um, you know what I'll do? I'm going to turn this into a uh, complimentary quad slash gone too soon. You know, um, I've been getting a lot of um, inspiration to start up my gone too soon again series. So I'll basically put this uh, in the title gone too soon, you know, um, because this, yeah, this artist could have made some incredible, well, he has already made some great influence, but um, contemporarily, if he was um, not suffering with his uh, depression and he was a little bit more uh, public, he would have made an even bigger impact. But, you know, his body of work speaks for itself. It's magnificent stuff. All right, y'all, I'm going to bounce. Uh, thanks very much for joining me, man. Take care. And uh, the next reaction, I believe, on this platform will probably be the um, James Taylor uh, reaction that I was mentioning. But if not, it'll probably be within the next couple of days. I know that it's it's um, very, very close. Anyways, you guys, take care. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, I got reactions in the shoot for Charles, Ronaldino, Rob, uh, CSN, um, Fiona. So look for those uh, very, very shortly. Take care, have a good one, and I'll catch you in the next reaction. Peace.